he's always been asked for and here we go we covered him in the last uh, live stream but i thought we'll make it compact we'll do it ready and we'll 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 get him going and the video for his insight i have just unlocked him and i have just uh, used a lot of my boxes to push him up to respect five so i didn't get him as a token i basically had to do it the hard way but let's have a look at um how we should consider building our Theoden and what the options are and what he's designed to do. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't currently you play the game on their computer or bought themselves a computer or a laptop for Christmas, uh, we use Bluestacks emulator for uh, for streaming and for for recording purposes. Uh, so if you are interested, if you if you need the link to download the app, feel free to check out in the comments. I've posted a link um, and uh, there we go shiny shiny bit of pre-advertising but uh <laughs> what can you do here he is his theoden with his spiel of blah 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 uh right now right now right to gone door um and we'll just swiftly fly through that on to his character information here we can see that he is all uh he's got his uh might his focus and his speed i was gonna say he's all about speed but actually he's got really solid might and actually really strong focus as well so he's got a bit of everything he is a leader so he gets extra command points five extra command points at level 20 which makes him solid because as um, many people know your, your army increases the damage uh, for the amount of troops so the more troops you have in your army the more damage output you will do um, which is very very useful they've also added the details on there uh, about exactly what they do. Let's take a look at his abilities. The Renewed is a 100% chance of removing one random debuff when it's maximized and gives you more focus. We can see extra focus is a bit, it's a bit raggedy to be honest. Uh, I don't know why they, they give you the extra focus there, but okay. And those of you who watch my live stream or have seen other videos, you know my disdain for the skill reinforcement. Well, unfortunately it is here. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, that late, late heal just to boost up your troop numbers and potentially do a little bit of damage towards the end. And defensive stance is a melee attack skill. It will kick off in turns three, six, and nine. So you get it three times per battle. It does a reasonable amount of attack. Uh, physical damage and one allied unit uh, has a damage received debuff based on might stat um, oh and sorry renewed I should say the remove the debuff is in turn two four six eight ten so it's pretty tasty um, hmm unfortunately it doesn't get rid of it anything in turn one so uh, we can kind of see where speed does become slightly important uh, depending on your skills especially if you take something like marshals or cavalry or something where you you need to be doing you really want to get that first impact into punch to reduce their numbers so you take less uh, coming back and you definitely don't want to be stunned yeah if they've got a commander that manages to stun you then you uh, you you lose a lot there but um it's not too bad as a table i don't know it's not my favorite but it's okay it's okay um his other one is very similar to what's well, the same as the owens rohrim so mounted unit damage increase uh, stackable up to three times so it becomes pretty decent especially if you've got your speed up with some tasty gear because i don't have any gear on him he's level one so this is very basic uh, we have a cleave which is a damage dealer affected by speed stat uh, kicking in turns three six and nine like the other melee attack and then riding excellence mounted units damage received minus 14 percent for all of them so uh not too bad at three we have your red leader so every round mounted units have this 75 percent chance of recovering we get that maxed it's guaranteed every round gaining hit points back for all of your units uh flanking uh, one of my favorite damage dealing abilities unfortunately it is only in round 369 like his other skills uh, but he does a huge damage against ranged units. So it's pretty good for taking out their, their damage dealing stuff back at you. Mounted combat on hit mounted units, 20% chance of dealing an additional 70% chance of damage. Again, these are the skills that I don't like. I don't like something that's 20%. I know you're playing the statistics game. You might have a really good turnout where you manage to hit like four times for each unit in the battle and joy, but you can't rely on that. That's not dependable damage. Um, and there are plenty of times with a 20% chance where that's not going to proc enough. For me, that's too little to be depend to, to be reliable. And the fact that later on towards the battle, um, 
you you want to be doing those extra damages early on to a battle and 20 percent chance is just too there's too much fluctuation there you know if it kicks in turns nines and tens it's, it's pretty useless um compared to if it's kicking in one two and threes when all your units are maxed so mounted combat uh, it's not uh, not a skill that i particularly like on to uh, the fifth uh, respect five horse master uh, which is the uh, taste one of the tastiest skills uh, i like horse master and chaotic retreat uh, army attack mounted units plus 15 attack plus 15 for all your mounted units with a bonus hit point plus five for all your mounted when it's maxed out so bonus attack for mounted and bonus hit, bonus hit points. You know, they're two skills that can be pretty hard to level up. And boom, you get a chunky, uh, hefty amount for both. Makes really tanks up your mounted armies. Uh, and Vow Protection, Commander Speed, uh, Increase, and then Gain Initiative during combat. I'm not entirely sure if his Commander Speed is super useful. I mean, it is if you're going to go with that debuff skill in rounds uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And you really want to get rid of that debuff with a high Commander Speed before you lose a turn but I don't know I, I'm not a huge fan of Vow Protection I think you can just put one point in it and gain the initiative bonus uh, which is the better way about doing it if the opponent has the initiative you have the initiative then oh well it's tough luck but there's a, there's a hopeful good chance that if you come against the stuff that's going to stun lock you or cause you problems uh, that you, you get your initiative so you still get your first turn hits to, to reduce them down Chaotic Retreat a huge massive thumping minus 35 defense which for a lot of units takes them down to bear you know skin and bones and that's super important for dealing huge amounts of damage chaotic retreat i really like especially because you can get other bits of gear and things that that reduce defense as well so um you know you can you can really strip stuff you, or you don't even have to worry about it things like goat riders probably is a bit of overkill but against something that's super super high um defense you know, you can whack it down by 35 and then potentially use those go riders for that minus 50% debuff. It's, it's just it's just a huge amount of loss. On to his builds. Um, I've, I could have picked some more, but I've only picked three, um, which is unusual. Again, if you see my videos, usually I give you um, variable options on them, but um, we'll see why. Uh, basic, there's not much to say. You know, you, you just get out what you need. Um, you're probably well it depends what you're going to be using him for um, but these are pretty easy to max out all of these for your character remove the debuff uh round seven plus healing damage skill and damage debuff um mounted plus damage stack a damage skill and a mounted minus damage uh, received debuff they blend in pretty pretty well you can see the the mounted theme so you're pretty much always going to be using him as your mounted commander and replace him with Owen. i think if you've got Owen at like an r5 and you've got theoden r1 I would probably still side more towards Eowyn because his skills are okay, but you get more flexibility and there's more there's more synergy and, and better ways of what you can do. And he, whilst he's got semi good skills on their own, I think they're a bit too too wishy washy. Yeah, okay, you've got the the mounted theme in a couple of skills down in Rohirrim, but at his top he's got that debuff, which is going to be useful for some armies, but not particularly really useful against other armies that are just going to be dealing damage de damage dealers to you, where you don't really care about uh, those debuffs. Uh, reinforcements that round seven onwards is not a good skill for me, um, and yeah, then you've got two sort of like physical attacks. There's too much to all over the place for me for this. If you have Yorin at five, I would still recommend that she's a better option than, than Theoden at, at, uh, at zero. Where we start to get a bit confusing and a little bit more tricky is when we get to um, him at respect three. And I think this is, it gives you some food for thought about whether you're going to go with some sort of this build instead of Yorin. I would probably still sign towards Yorin until I got um, Theoden up to five. But I mean, it, it depends completely on you. Uh, he has the Arid Leader, which is a nice heal at max. It's 100% every turn, uh, keeping that healing going with flanking for a, a good attack against the ranged units. Mounted Combat, which is my one that I'm just unsure about. Um, so if I was going to go with a round three build, I probably would shy away from Mounted Combat. Then I would probably take Rohim, uh, Cleave, Riding Excellence maybe. And then possibly go for the for the debuff removal from his other tree, tier one and skip mounted combat. I don't know. You guys let me know. I've only just unlocked him and starting to use him. Do you find mounted combat is doing the damage output that you want? I, I suspect not. I suspect the, the, the very occasional battle where you get mounted combat, mounted combat proccing twice maybe in the first couple of turns for multiple units. 
is going pretty well for you. But the turns where Mounted Combat maybe doesn't proc at all in the first two or three turns, it uh, kind of loses you those seven skill points. I'm not sure, depends on the, your play style. But it's okay, it's got potential. I can see I can see how you could probably want to go with him and if you're going to level him up and hope that you get to your, your five at some stage soon. But five is the game changer for me. Um, but yeah, I, that Mounted Combat, I just feel sad. The percentage is way too low for me. At uh, Respect 5, you get, for me, Mounted Perfection. And there are multiple options for how you blend these together. I've avoided the uh, debuff removal skill. Like I said, simply because you're spending 15 points and the only real ability you're going to gain is that five turns during battle, you're removing debuffs. If you are going against an army with fire damage, if you're going against Gandhis, if you know specifically you're going against those armies that are going to cause you problems with debuffs, then okay, respec and take those points where necessary if you feel like you, you're going to struggle with those debuffs. Um, if not, then think about maybe being more offensive rather than trying to soak and take away those debuffs. Can I do the damage early on to force the opponent to, to do less damage back to me? You know, rather than trying to mitigate it, I'll try and reduce it by, by being offensive. So Horsemaster is your superstar skill um, attack mounted units plus the um, uh, hit points in the attack and then back that up with chaotic retreat which also is solid so you can just burn through all of the uh, opponent's enemy lines then like i said before i would just take one point in valve protection just to grab the initiative which kind of probably helps you against certain yeoman builds and other theodians if they've not picked up a point in valve protection then uh, of course we've got your leader for our permanent constant heal each turn uh, but that wouldn't be the thing that I would prioritize straight away, personally. Uh, I know, again, some people are going to say, oh, no, it's super important. Um, I feel like if you're going to, because everything's going to be relying on your, your units doing a lot of stuff, your commander's not probably doing a whole load of damage, then I personally would go for Rohirrim and Riding Excellence as my next priorities, just because... Bonus stackable damage going up to like potentially 30% across the board for all of your units, plus the extra plus 15 might that comes in as a kicker. Don't forget my skills are on, I've got no gear and nothing on these, so that, that damage would increase. And then getting the riding excellence for the minus 14% damage received for all your units is going to add uh, probably better survivability maybe than a few points in your leader and then not and mounted combat again. Flanking is good skill. But for me, flanking is where I would end my points. That would be my extra at the end. Yeah, um, again, I'm sure people post if you've got different builds, if you've got different ideas, how you would play it. I'm gonna be testing around with them anyway so I can give an update if I find that it doesn't work. But um, I, would, I, would, I would take a DPS dealing stuff at the end, um, choosing between cleave or flanking. Um, I, I don't know. It depends how, how important I'd want. Something modified by speed style, something that uh, increases against range units. Personally, I would probably go with a flanking skill just because um, the targeting of the range units is pretty vital. They're very, very similar. They both attack in the same round turns, round three, six, and nine. So I'd rather be getting a huge volley off against their bow knights or their stuff that's at the back that's, that's peppering me and causing me problems. Um, so that would be the way that I would I would go about it. You know, Horse Master, Chaotic Retreat, maybe a point in Bow of Protection. Then I'd probably be looking at Rohirrim, uh, maybe Riding Excellence, and then I would be looking at um, probably Yorid Leader and then Flanking. But I'm sure everybody has their own ideas. And again, you've got the other table if you need the debuff uh, removal and other pits and pieces. I hope this helps for people who are considering it. Uh, who are unsure what they want to do with their Theoden. Uh, I will hopefully have some more videos out soon. I'm mixing between the live stream and the videos at the moment, so I'm probably going to try and do some more videos over the Christmas. Maybe I might do a special Boxing Day um, stream tomorrow. It just depends on my schedule um, because we don't have work off here in Taiwan. So, um, yeah, there's no, there's no holiday period to just chill around all day. If you have more ideas for commanders, uh, as I get them or as I can get my friends, I will uh, get the videos up and try and complete as many of the good commanders as I can uh, in the next couple of months. Take care. Bye-bye.